Today's video is sponsored by Vendu. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Lori. I'm a reseller on Poshmark and on eBay. Today I want to talk to you about five trends that I'm leaving behind in 2024. I did do this video in 2023. We're going to revisit those trends and see if I have stayed away from them or if there are any that I'm leaning into a little bit more in 2024. I really enjoy looking at trend videos and I think it's very important as a reseller to stay on top of the trends. It can be a challenge for resellers who are buying things secondhand because we tend to get a lot of previous seasons at the thrift stores. Um, that's not to say that we don't get some really amazing finds that are totally relevant and new, but those are more the exception and not the norm. So I think it's really important to know what we are looking for, to see what is selling. I also want to say when it comes to trends for my closet, I often do take a look at what's selling for me. So something that I'm not picking up, maybe something that is a best seller for you. I always say take everything that you see on YouTube with a grain of salt and I include myself with that as well. I like to look at some of the fashion shows. I also like to watch some of the other influencer videos to see what other people are forecasting. And then I try to apply it to my life as a reseller. Things that are popular on the runway I like to try to translate to see how they would work in everyday styles. And then even more so, what of these styles am I going to find at the thrift store? My next trend video will be five trends I'm looking for, and then I'm going to talk about brands that I'm leaving behind and brands that I'm looking for in 2024. So if you don't wanna miss out, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the like if you're having a good time today. Let's jump into it. First, let's talk about the five trends that I left behind last year, and then we'll move on and we'll see what I'm leaving behind this year. I will link these for you if you wanna see that entire video from last year. But one of the things that I left behind in 2023 was tie-dye. I am still on that. I am not actively seeking out tie-dye. I do have some stuff in my closet that is still tie-dye. I think the last tie-dye item that I sold, funny enough, was the sweatshirt that went with the sweat shorts that I featured in last year's video that was a set that I purchased for myself that was free people. I held onto the sweatshirt for a while and then I actually ended up selling that. Still not looking for tie-dyes in 2024. Another thing were all of the cores. In 2022, I was pretty obsessed with looking into all of the cores, grandma core, cottage core, dark academia, Barbie core. I decided I wanted to leave all those cores behind with the exception of some Barbie inspired pieces. I did this video before the movie really blew up. And then when the Barbie movie blew up, a lot of people were using Barbie in their title. So more Barbie inspired and less like Barbie core. I'm trying to pay less attention to those little micro trends that seem to be like really big on Depop. That's not really my area of expertise. I'm actually more so leaning towards classics and quiet luxury, if anything. So the cores, I'm still not really into so much. Bikini Separates was another one in 2023 that I am not revisiting. I had so many at one point and I have since donated a bunch or delisted. Um, so I do stay away from Bikini Separates. I prefer one piece bathing suits, uh, new with tag bathing suits. I tend to have a lot of bathing suits and I think bathing suits are just a tough sell when you can't try them on. That is why I'm staying away from the separates. Wedges is another thing, although I did recently purchase a pair of Ugg wedges. I found them at the Goodwill outlet in Boston and they did sell rather quickly. So there's always exceptions and I will always talk about the exceptions to the rule. If I find something from a higher end brand that I like the style of overall, that the comps are good for, I still will pick them up for the right price. So those Ugg wedges were an exception and they were a quick sale, but generally speaking, like espadrille wedges, I'm not picking up. Skirts is probably the one thing that I am looking at a little bit more. I think maxi skirts are really fun to pick up. I don't buy a ton of skirts because at this time last year I was overflowing with skirts. Um, I'm looking at them a little bit more, especially now that it's springtime. Sometimes I do forecast trend videos at the start of the year. This one I'm doing in the middle of March. So I'm thinking about skirts right now. So I'm not as sworn off with skirts. All right, let's jump into things that I have sworn off for 2024. Number one, the trend that I have left behind for this year is shredded, majorly distressed jeans. I think as I'm leaning into more quiet luxury and just classic styles for my reselling business, I'm looking more towards 
classic jeans. Not that I wouldn't pick up a pair of jeans that have a little tear, but like the crazy shredded jeans, I am not going anywhere near them. I think in general, things look like they're trending towards a more tailored look, a little bit classier. I do have a couple pairs of jeans that are distressed in areas. So if I come over here to Vendu, I can look and see what I have for distressed jeans. So I don't really have a lot of like the shredded stuff, but American Eagle with distressing in the knee, you can see right here, you get this like little yellow flag. If something's been listed for a long time, this is been listed for 1,045 days. These are all distressed jeans. And I think one thing that many of them have in common or all of them, as I'm looking, they are all over a year old. These Levi's high rise being the most recent and they're from February 27th of 2023. So this to me is a really good indication that this is a style that isn't doing very well for me. And then you combine things like distressed and skinny. Things are sticking around for even longer. I still like a raw hem that might have a little bit of fraying, but as far as like throughout the jean, I'm letting those go. As a little indent to shredded jeans, I'm also really tapping the brakes on skinny jeans. This is something that comes in and out. I still think skinny jeans are super appropriate for certain things. I prefer skinny jeans when it comes to wearing like my tall boots, but the really, really tight fitting jeans with like ballet flats, I'm just not into. But in general, I'm still avoiding purchasing them. Three particular brands that I'm really not picking up skinny jeans for are Madewell, Free People, and Everlane. I recently picked up a pair of jeans from Everlane that were like a slim cut. They were high-waisted and a slim cut. They weren't called a skinny jean. They were more of an ankle fit denim and I find that that is still okay. I still think that thinner leg is okay, but I just personally am not picking up skinny jeans, especially from those brands that I mentioned. I think I didn't have as much control around brands like Free People, Madewell, and Everlane last year or the year before, and now I'm just like passing on them. The next trend that I'm leaving behind, I really haven't been picking up for a while, but I feel like I'm really noticing it now, is the waterfall cardigan. Tina actually mentioned this. We were brainstorming ideas. That is absolutely something that I'm not picking up anymore. It feels like a 2010s style that kind of hung around for a while for heavy sweaters, for long duster sweaters, light sweaters. They're just no longer coming home with me. I love a cardigan sweater too. I'm going more for like a straight look in the front when it comes to cardigans. Let me know if you are still picking up waterfall cardigans. If they sell well for you, let me know. I just wanted to take a minute to thank today's sponsor. Vendu is a cross-listing service that allows you to put your items on multiple marketplaces. My two main platforms are Poshmark and eBay. That's what you'll always hear me talking about, but there are several others that you can cross-list to, including Mercari, and Depop, Etsy, Shopify, Vestier Collective, Kittison. There are so many platforms. And as I mentioned last month, it was my toughest month ever on Poshmark. I was really grateful that I had Vendu to cross list my items because eBay saved me. And while overall the month wasn't one of my best, I made over a thousand dollars on eBay, which really made up for some of the losses I had on Poshmark. As I mentioned earlier in this video, when I was showing you the denim um, that I had in stock, one of the best features that I probably don't talk about enough is the feature that lets you know how long an item has been in your inventory. I find that super helpful when I'm debating, you know, is it time to donate this or relist this item? They have the delist and relist feature that I talk about all the time because that's fantastic because you can delist an item and then relist it and it's like it's a new item so if you are trying to save money and source less but make the most of the inventory that you have that delist relist function is fantastic but also that little yellow flag that shows up after an item has been listed for 60 days it's just a little reminder like hey if you're somebody who doesn't want to carry inventory for a long time you might want to either lower the price change some of your wording in your title or your description delist and relist or perhaps sell it in a live platform Form. You'll see that flag pop up after 60 days. That is the default setting. But if you're somebody who wants to know when an item has been around for 30 days, you can adjust it to that. 
or if you don't care if an item's been around for 60 days, you're not gonna worry about it until it's been 100 days, you can adjust it to that. Not only that, but you saw when I hovered over the flag, it tells you exactly how many days it's been listed. That is really important information. So they give you great analytical information about the stuff that is in your closet and how long it's been available for. You can see at a glance which platforms it's listed on. Vendu is the heart of my reselling business and I really can't imagine doing business without this amazing service. If you'd like to give Vendu a try, click the link in my description. You will save 25% off your first month of service. Let's jump back and see what other trends I am not picking up this year. Okay, number three, I'm specific this year about skirts because last year I just said skirts in general. This year I'm going to say mini skirts. I don't plan on picking up mini skirts anymore. I'm definitely leaning more into maxi skirts. I think people are wearing maxi skirts really casually now, so I'm looking at them more as like a staple piece, like a maxi skirt with a t-shirt and a pair of tennis shoes is a fun look that has been trending for a bit and I think people are just becoming more and more comfortable with it. These are my bins that house my skirts and I do have a fair amount of shorter skirts already in stock. So that is a short skirt from Lily Pulitzer. This is part of a suit set from Calvin Klein, new with tag and like Barbie pink. Oh gosh, this 159, this was literally the tags I used when I first started my business. So this was the 159th listing that I actually posted. How crazy is that? For reference, I, I think I've sold over 7,000 pieces now. This is a size four, Banana Republic. I just have a lot of skirts, a lot fit in here. And um, yeah, I just think I need to be more selective. I think this is a dress actually here. Um, these are some of the bins Tina and I still need to go through. Right, handsome? <laughs> so I have enough skirts. If I see a midi skirt or a knee length skirt that I think is good, I just recently picked up a Madewell knee length skirt that was new with tag. I thought it was a really pretty style. Funny enough, I've had a few skirts sell within the past couple of weeks when I did my 40% off sale. And two of them were more like junior styles, I would say. One was Angelina's skirt, I believe, and one I picked up because it was vintage Calvin Klein, and I had it for like a thousand days, over a thousand days in my inventory. So this vintage 1970s Calvin Klein denim skirt made in the USA, I did sell that, but it only sold for 15 dollars and it took so long to sell definitely nothing that I'm looking forward to reintroducing into my closet and then I had a vintage again y2k American apparel big sunflower print mini skater a-line skirt that sold for $19 with my recent sale. I had a Michael Kors stretch black skirt sell for $18. That was more knee length. And then a Vince Camuto stretch pull-on pencil skirt that sold for $20. So those black skirts were both pencil skirt styles, knee length, more professional. Okay, next up is a category that I saw mentioned numerous times on a lot of trend videos, and it's something that I was already doing, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna go with this. I'm leaving behind high heels. I don't know many people who will be sad about this. I feel like I only purchase high heels for myself when I absolutely have a very specific occasion to wear them. I pray that I don't have to wear them for a long time. I like to get one maybe that has a little bit of a platform. And usually I pack a pair of teaks when I go out. Today we have an event in Boston um, for Jay's work called the Ellie Fund and it's a fundraiser to raise money for breast cancer. They have an Academy Awards theme and a red carpet and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm dreading wearing heels already. There will always be a place for heels in someone's wardrobe, but for me, I am just a casual person. I get more excited about casual pieces and I sell more casual stuff. So if I do find heels, like a little kitten heel or a very small heel is what is in right now. I like a chunky heel if I am going to do a high heel, whether that's in or out, I just feel like that that's more comfortable for me. Unless it's a really fantastic brand that I get for a good price that has good comps, I am generally leaving heels behind. They're also a little bit of a pain to store for me. A lot of the high heels that I still have live in here and so many of them have been here for just ages and they're beautiful heels. This is a nice brand, they're good quality. They have just been here for so long. Like this is something I would never pick up now. This is a decent brand. They just haven't sold. And I just have so many. Actually, 
these have a lot of um, likes on them. This is purple label Ralph Lauren. This could be something I can see myself picking up, but I don't know. Like these, these shoes have been here for so long. These are wedges. This is last year's style that I stopped picking up. I still have wedges left. Here are more wedges. Here are more wedges, more high heels. So you can see why I, I just don't need to add more to the mix. It would take a very special shoe for me to pick it up now um, because some of these have just been here. Like this, another wedge, another wedge. I mean, this is all inventory I already own and I just wanted to come down. Lumpy, what are you doing? I just wanted to give you some examples because like I said, you may be great at selling high heels and you may want to continue to pick them up. I have been holding on to some of these things for years. More wedges right there. So I hope this helps um, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Oh my gosh, he's being so loud. What do you have, handsome? What is that? Well, that is the cover of these over here. My little Starbucks things. No, no, young man. Casual shoes just sell better for me. Even when it comes to putting dresses and skirts on, people are pairing them less and less with high heels and more and more with comfortable flats or a lower heel. I had a pair of Sam Edelman leopard print calf hair block heels that sold for $32 in December. Um, and those were, like I said, a chunky heel. I had a 12 piece bundle with a pair of brash blue suede heels that sold. They were in the bundle for $24 and this was probably a 50% off bundle. So those probably sold for $12. Most of the heels that I'm seeing that sold were chunky. I sold a pair of black Steve Madden heels back in July. They're just not something that I am personally drawn to or that my buyers seem to be very drawn to. So I will not miss picking up heels. All right, number five on my list of trends that I am not picking up. I don't know that it's so much a trend. One of the things I plan to not pick up in 2024 or in any future years is low quality, high maintenance pieces. No low quality, high maintenance pieces for me anymore. This includes acrylic, pilly sweaters. Just think about that for a second. Nightmare. I am looking for more quality pieces, sustainable fabrics, classic styles. If I'm on the fence about something and the quality isn't there, or it looks like I'm going to have to take it home and Tina's going to have to depill it for 20 minutes just to get like a $20 sale out of it, it's just not worth it to me. I would rather have less items higher quality with a higher return for me as well. I'm really focusing on not taking home low quality pieces or high maintenance pieces. What does happen often is I buy something that I think is low maintenance and then I get home and we see a stain or we see a hole and then it comes down to a judgment call like, okay, well, this is home now. I've already paid for it. It may or may not be returnable depending on what store I got it from. Most cases I can't exchange it. So then I have to look at it and say, I paid five, six, seven dollars for this, three dollars for this, whatever it is. Is it worth me taking the time or Tina taking the time to make it sellable. This is where whatnot is really nice. If I have a little flaw, I can just talk about it and I can start it at the price that I paid. If it sells, great. If it doesn't, I donate it. So that's always a nice option with lives. There are always gonna be little flaws that you find. It's just the nature of this business. But I'm certainly not gonna welcome them into my home if I can avoid it. I'm leaving behind shredded, super distressed denim, as well as skinny jeans from some of my favorite brands like Everlane, Madewell, and Free People. Waterfall cardigans are out at the Tata House. I'm not bringing those home anymore. Number three, mini skirts. I'm also saying goodbye to high heels. Hopefully if somebody's looking for a pair of high heels, I have something that already exists in my closet, but I'm not seeking out any new high heels to bring home with me in 2024. And Lastly, I am swearing off high maintenance, low quality items in general at the thrift stores. And I'm hoping that that is a trend that will continue into 2025 and beyond. I will say that that category is becoming more and more challenging. The thrift stores seem to be flooded with brands like Shein or Amazon Essentials or just these no-name, 
polyester, flammable, disposable clothing. I'm seeing so much of it at the thrift store, which is actually really sad. I really hope that we start trending towards more sustainable fashion in our own wardrobes and that people see the value in purchasing something that is quality the first time and then taking really good care of it through the years. That's all for today's top five. My next video will include five trends that I am looking for this year. And then I'm going to do a follow up and talk about five brands I'm leaving behind and five brands that I'm seeking out in 2024. Let me know how you like the top five videos. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more from me. I appreciate you guys so much. I will be back with a new video really soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Remember, if you'd like to give Vendo a try, click the link in my description and you will save 25% off your first month of service.